Hello and welcome to Intermediate Macroeconomics. My name is Sergio Campolias and I'll be the instructor for this course. In this next set of videos, we're going to be talking about the real business cycle model. And we're going to be using this model to understand the effect of different events in the economy. The key here is going to be to focus on how equilibrium conditions change as different events such as productivity shocks affect the economy. We're going to be focusing on three steps. First, we're going to be setting up the model. For this, we're going to be talking about how consumers behave, how firms behave, and lastly, how the government behaves. Then we're going to take all of these behavior together, and we're going to be talking about the equilibrium of the model. We're going to define where the aggregate supply of goods comes from, where the aggregate demand for goods come from, and then we're going to study the full system so that we can characterize the equilibrium of the economy. Then in the final part, we're going to be going through the example of a shock, a change in the productivity or TFP of the economy, and see how that affects the different people that inhabit the economy. All right. Uh, first, let's talk a little bit more generally about the model setup uh, before we go into the details of how the different agents in the economy behave. Now, the objective here is to know the effect on the economy of different events. These are the shocks I was just talking about a productivity shock, a change in the preference of people that wants them, you know, makes them want to consume more or save more, a change in the behavior of government. Perhaps the government wants to cut taxes or increase spending. Uh, as these, there are many different shocks, events that can affect the economy, and we want to know the effect of these events. But what is an economy? What are we referring to when we say an economy? Well, an economy is people, is the people that make the world we live in. And so when we say the effect on the economy, we really mean the effect on people. We want to know how these events affect the decisions that people take. And the key concept here, especially because this is a macroeconomics course, is the equilibrium. Uh, we need to know how people react to events around them, but when they react to these events, they interact with one another. And these interactions can themselves change, strengthening or debilitating the initial effects that these events have on the decisions that people make. And so equilibrium analysis makes precise what those interactions and reactions are and what the effect is going to be on the economy, what the effect is going to be on the things that people are deciding upon. Okay, so to study the economy, we first need to know how people behave. So we're going to be focusing on people doing different things. We're going to be focusing on consumers who are going to be utility maximizers. We're going to be focusing on firms, which are managed by people who want to maximize profits. And then lastly, we need a model of how they interact. That's going to be the place that market clearing through prices is going to take. So both consumers and firms are going to be price takers, and they are going to behave in a certain way given the prices they face. And then we're going to figure out how those prices are set in equilibrium so that the whole economy works. The objective is to use this model to figure out what will happen if firms become more productive or, as I, as I was saying, consumers change in some way. Perhaps consumers are facing higher taxes. Perhaps consumers are being given more money from the government in, as, in a form of transfers. Perhaps they become more patient and want to save more. So these are changes that we can study once we have a model of how consumers behave, how firms behave, and lastly, how they interact. The particular model economy we're going to be focusing on is a two-period production economy. Now, in this economy, consumers and firms operate in both periods. So consumers are alive for both periods and they have to save to go from one period to another. But firms also operate through both periods and so they have to invest in capital that they can use in the second period. Production requires capital and labor. And then finally, there's going to be a government that raises taxes to finance revenue. Uh, with this, we finish this first video, and in our next video, we're going to be going in-depth into the consumer problem. Uh, I'll see you then.